I personally love visiting the parks that take roller coasters and innovate on them to do something that they're not normally intended to do. And that's what we're gonna be checking out in today's theme park experience. Some of the gnarliest looking coasters you guys have ever witnessed on this show. Some of the most innovative coasters I have ever seen. Kicking things off, we have a very cool boomerang right in the parking lot to the park entrance. And as we get a little bit deeper, we have an inverted flying coaster that actually wraps around the barrel of a tree trunk. We have a top thrill dragster style launch coaster that not only goes to the top of the park, but also takes us on an exploration around the hills with all of that top speed and momentum. We have a coaster called Neptune versus Poseidon, a wooden versus hybrid coaster with full nighttime lighting. We have a Maverick style Intamin Blitz coaster that has 10 inversions. My favorite one on the list, get this, a never before seen hybrid wooden steel top inverted coaster. That is right. I don't know how this creator pulled it off, but it is in fact an RMC that's inverted throughout the whole course of the coaster. That one I'm looking forward to. We have Giga Coasters, we have Kitty Coasters, we have Go-Karts, everything that you can come to expect in this park, but with a little bit of a twist. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Lakeside Adventure. Come join me on this one here today because you're not gonna wanna miss out on these fun experiences. Let's go. Hey, oh my planet coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today, we're going to be looking at Lakeside Adventure created by Potatus55, an advanced builder in this community. And here they say, Hey, Johnny, this is my first non contest park with 17 roller coasters, five areas, a mini area, and 22 flat rides. Visit the park counterclockwise for the better, ex for the better experience. And on the Steam page, there is also more info and yes as we can see on the steam page it does list more of the uh specific coasters the green arrow first coaster in the park with some effects and custom supports the hook my first full custom support coaster and the second coaster in the park the caterpillar before on it place was a shuttle invert coaster with a farm theme a small kitty coaster and it does do laps a king ghoster tacophobia the longest coaster in the park with 2300 meters themed to the in-game mascot king ghoster Skybow, a Mark Ride Skybow model not working in game. Aww. Neptune vs. Poseidon, which I mentioned, is the Woody vs. Hybrid. Pirate Quest, only dark ride in the park and only water ride. A water ride dark ride. Very cool. Lightning Stampede is a 10 inversion full nighttime lighting coaster. Cyber Dragon, a kitty coaster. It's a most themed coaster in the park. It goes in and out of the door, indoors and outdoors, and also great for the guests to explore. Cosmic Cow Flight Machine, an inverted wooden coaster themed to an in game mascot cow galactic flight the last coaster made in the park it's thrill wing coaster very very cool so that is an outline of some of these uh 17 coasters that we're going to visit here today an absolutely outstanding and very unique theme park creation so i'm super excited to dive on into this so let's delay no further and do exactly just that Okay, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I know you guys love your parking lots for some reason. And uh, we got a super fancy one here today. We have the highway with the uh, little cars driving up and down the highway. And they pass right under this fun little boomerang. Go right into the parking lot so that they can start finding their stalls. And if you want, I guess you can hop out of your car, chop the fence, and get on the first coaster of the day. You, there's an actual way into this. We'll, we'll find it later. But I figure since we're all the way out here, we're in the parking lot, we might as well just get right to it it's a drive tire launch coaster it's a unique little uh boomerang in fact i think we're gonna have to go orbit view on this one just so we can uh see what's going on here i believe mods were used on some of these coasters and that's why one of them said it was not working in game which one was that i'm gonna miss the coaster so i have to look after but yeah look at this reverse launch but then it kind of goes up this hook custom supports and what's fun about this it's using a single rail as the custom supports a single rail coaster 
Look at that. That is exciting. Normally, I don't like these kind of generic, small boomerang coasters, but this is by far uh, one of the coolest little innovative things I've ever seen. Not generic by any means. And it's just like a, a side attraction in the parking lot. I love it. Absolutely love it. Something to like entice you to draw your attention as you drive into the theme park. That is really quite cool. All of these custom supports are made out of another coaster. It's a, a single rail. And I thought that was like a really cool way to do custom supports, wrapping two coasters together like that. Really, really cool stuff. So yeah, we have not even stepped into the theme park yet and I'm already having a ton of fun. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be a good one here today when we're, uh, we're having fun and we haven't even walked into the park yet. In fact, uh, it's rarely, rarely that I've ever seen that. Somebody did a pre-show or something outside um, one of the, the parks we did about a month ago. And I thought that was fun. I think uh, I think that's something for people to think about. Some little fun extras that you can put in to just get us pumped up. Now they wanted us to go counterclockwise, which is cool because I really am curious to check out this uh, tree, inverted flying tree machine thing that you got going on over here. Got the chair swing, flat ride. I, I cannot believe how much is crammed into this park. I was like, yeah, this looks like a good amount of coasters. And then as I got the B-roll, um, not only was I like, oh, that's a good amount of coasters, but they all have something interesting going on with them. Lots of talking points. Uh, and then you read the description, and it's like, 17 coasters, 22 flat rides? My goodness, that's like 40 things in this park. And this is not an end-to-end -end mega park, yet it has more rides and attractions than yesterday's park, which was an end-to-end -end park. This feels more like a, a, a festival park. It kind of gives me RCT vibes. It's really cool. I like everything that I'm seeing, and I think it's just going to get more fun as we go a little bit deeper. So we're going to be kicking things off with a, a traditional corkscrew coaster called the Green Arrow. Yeah, there's a look at all the stats if you want to see them. Let's jump right on into it, kicking things off with a front bumper view. Let's go. Track view is usually the smoothest, but that corkscrew was a little bit janky, wasn't it? Let's see uh, if they have any nighttime lighting because they did mention it a few times in their introduction. That one's taking off right now. Let's get to the top here. There we go. And uh, maybe we could try a different perspective. Oh, I don't think that's very good. There we go. That's yeah, a little janky, isn't it? Nonetheless, I absolutely love it. Uh, a very traditional corkscrew coaster, and you've done the nighttime lighting as well. One one of the small critiques that I gave in yesterday's video, uh, I, I personally like it when we have a lot of um, ambience, nighttime lighting, and so far, this park is really going over the top. The green arrow, I love it. Let's go back to daytime here. The ambience is pretty loud, but it's giving good vibes. Very good vibes. I almost feel like I'm in a, I don't, I don't know what, a, a, Acme Park? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Something about it is uh, almost cartoony and fun and, and silly and playful. It's great. Planet Coaster. Let's go. Yeah, this thing. Sokoa Adventure. I guess that's a giant Sokoa tree. Am I saying that right? 
it looks cool, nonetheless. I got a cool shot of it for the B-roll where the uh, flying coaster wraps around the tree trunk there. I was actually pretty impressed by this. So uh, I'm looking forward to riding these in multiple perspectives, these coasters, and also seeing the nighttime lighting. This is gonna be a full experience considering we have 17 coasters here, basically back to back to back, nonstop coasters and perspectives, day and night. I love it. This is what Park Spotlight's all about, you guys. Let's go. Yeah, the, uh, from the first coaster in the park entrance there in the parking lot to now this. Uh, even the corkscrew coaster, while well, it was uh, kind of a traditional, you, you still ha wrapped it over top that little pond there and you had like lighting on there. There's a lot of uh, taking it over the top, just like making, taking things to the extreme. And I really appreciate that about this park so far. So we're gonna do a little bit of an orbit view, go up the tree trunk here. And I just wanna take a look at the coaster itself uh, both at the, the nighttime lighting and how it interacts with itself. Let's see this. Oh my, I didn't think the uh, orbit camera was gonna go upside down. Oh boy, this is not what I intended. Oh my God, but we're going with it. Oh, I'm getting disorientated. What is happening? Oh, good googly moogly. Uh, this is a complete disaster dumpster fire of a POV, but you know what? We're, sometimes we gotta switch things up and I have no idea how to control this camera right now. Oh my goodness gracious, what have I done? That was horrendous. Forgive me, am I not in orbit view? I'm in guest facing. That's orbit view. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I was wondering what was happening there. Well, now I know for future, if I, if I ever find a coaster, it might be actually good to do it on the, this coaster back here. But uh, guest facing, zoom out, it will flip the camera. I did not know that. So here I am, seven years into Planet Coaster, still learning stuff, still discovering things. And I love it. Absolutely love it. That was uh, hilarious. Okay. Uh, I think this is my favorite part here. A little heart run roll through the garden there, through the twiggly branches, up and around. Uh, that and uh, the fact that it wraps around the tree trunk. It goes up through the tree trunk. Very exciting, fun little coaster. And uh, that's that's going to be like a running theme. None of these coasters, they, they did say in the uh, introduction there on the Steam page that their longest coaster in the park was 2,300 meters, which 2.3 kilometers, which is a very, very long coaster. But most of them by nature, if we like just click this one, like 240 meters, a lot of them seem pretty standard in terms of what you can find in a, in a traditional theme park but they're just kind of like taken to the next level. Whether it's the theming or the coaster supports, whatever, they, they do something unique with each of them. And I find that very exciting, right? Because yeah, we could just build a bunch of standard coasters, put them around the park, but we've seen that before. And Potatoes55 here, our creator of the day, doing something different. And I love to see it, especially after we've done 600 something park spotlights still discovering new things. That's always impressive to me. Very, very impressive. So here we are at one of my favorite juniors, a uh, Caterpillar coaster. Double pass through on this, very lazy, chill, sit at the back of the train here and just enjoy the Caterpillar. Family friendly coaster. I don't think this one's gonna do anything innovative or special, but the garden setting and the colors, as you can see, a little tables down below, the yellow brown, got this banana thing going on here. Beautiful scenery. It's all looking very, very good. Okay, here we go.
Very cute and cozy. Let's see if it has any nighttime lighting for this, the pass through. It doesn't pass through. Oh, no, there it does. I thought it was coming to a halt. Here we go. Yeah, a little bit. It's very soft and subtle in this area. I definitely think you could have amped up the lighting on this, uh, on this coaster. Just because it's, uh, so playful. Would have loved to see a little bit more of those bright yellow lights. Got a bit of a bumblebee color theme going on here. Pretty fun. The caterpillar. I still think there's so much fun things you could do with the uh, Junior Wendigo, the Caterpillar. I get excited every time I ride these because I have seen some innovative things done with just a, a Junior. Still think we haven't hit the pinnacle of what can be explored with those with those coasters. Let's go check out the cave. What is this? Oh, I think we got to go at nighttime here. Ooh. We got the uh, carousel in the creepy area of the park. Oh, the cave is the carousel. Well, that's quite nice. I'm not mad at it. Yeah, it's actually quite atmospheric in here. <laughs> Cute. That's different. Again, just taking your standard carousel and doing something really creative with it. We have a triple launch drop tower coming out of a crypt. Those are your more traditional theme park flat rides, and you've spookified them. I like that. It's different. And uh, here we have a little eatery area. This is cozy. Thatched buildings. You use something about these thatched roofs, uh, the way you've constructed them. They stand out very different than the ones we've seen in the past. Yeah, I like it. This is super adorable. What a cute park. But it also takes itself seriously. There's a lot of innovation and, and creativity put into it. All right. This one was talked about in the introduction. Is this the longest coaster in the park? It is. So we're, we're ramping things up. There's a custom made King Ghoster. He's, <laughs> looks like he's got lipstick on or something. If this is, if this is what I think it is, it's 2.3 kilometers in length. No, no, no. That's the triple drop drop. I knew, I knew something was wrong there. This is the one I'm looking for. Taco phobia. I didn't even know what that word means. I'm gonna have to look it up here. Irrational fear of speed. Interesting. All right. We got one taken off here. The King Ghoster Taco Phobia. Uh, yeah, we'll just go track view for this. I guess we're going at nighttime. It is a spooky ride. Let's go. is freaking exhilarating whoa into a little spooky mansion to end things off i love it <laughs> again with a touch of creativity super fun boarding station on this although for what was intended to be a nighttime experience i really think it's going to excel a lot better during the day let's see this again and this time we'll do the orbit view Oh my goodness gracious. Look at how high that goes. To the top of the park and back. I definitely like the explorative nature of this. I'll talk about it after.
right there it is. Let me finish my thoughts there. Yeah, normally with these like top thrill dragster style coasters that we see, uh, generally like they just go up, do a top hat stall, and then come back down and run themselves back in. Whereas what you've done, ooh, the planet coaster themed pieces. Rarely do we see these being used as a kit. I love to see it. Oh my God, it's amazing in here. I love the wavy roof. That is super playful. Uh, that's incredible. Yeah, normally what you see with these, uh, they don't really explore. We got to have that top thrill. We get those high speeds, hit the top hat stall, and then we go for a bit of an exploration, which is really nice. Although for a nighttime spooky coaster that's themed around King Ghost for themselves, I would have really loved to see more of that nighttime lighting and cryptic atmosphere, more fog effects and dark lighting, uh, more graveyards. Like we should explore some of that spookiness. Other than this like crypt thing at the back there, uh, uh, there wasn't really thing, anything spooky about it or any nighttime atmosphere. So that was the only part that kind of disappointed me. Still very, very fun. Oh, is this like a thing? More info at the Steam description. Oh, this is the thing that doesn't work. <laughs> oh my god. That is mesmerizing. I, again, I gotta love, I love the innovation here. Just uh, a silly little archway like that turned into something super fun that apparently the guests can ride, but shouldn't. <laughs> wow. I, I, I tend to say I love it when you guys do go-karts. While I want to say that this is an extremely disappointing circuit, I love it. It works so well here because this is like the kiddie area, right? The kids land. And I think it's just such a playful, the grand race, <laughs> even the name, grand. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah, the kids are going to have fun on it. And you have the music here, the atmosphere, you've themed it. It's got a great garden around it, a playground. It's adorable. Not mad at those go-karts whatsoever because it's so thematically hilarious. What, what do we got going on here? The wild mouse. Yeah, let's go check out the wild mouse. Great color theming on that. You even colored the freaking employee. I didn't know they were recolorable, that's for certain. For some reason, I thought you put like an animatronic out there. Yeah. Got me questioning my reality right now. Yeah, this is cozy. A standard wild mouse in a really fun, playful area of the park. Let's check it out. Pretty standard, traditional wild mouse, but I like it. I like the setting here. We're just nestled into this gorgeous little uh, forest there. Still playing on all of that kitty, kitty land stuff. It's great. Mm -hmm. We got the balloon rides. What was this area called? The kids area. It's adorable. We got a bit of a pirate coaster here. Let me see if we can find the entrance for this. This is the one that I want to, I want to try with that stupid perspective. What the heck is going on here? All right, I'm feeling it. 
Yeah, this is quite nice. The Sky Explorer. Yeah, you definitely crammed a lot of flat rides in here. Am I gonna find the queue up here? Fury of the Seas. Let's go. Also, um, interesting coaster choices. For that of a pirate themed coaster, this is cool. The shantiness of it all. We're gonna go upside down. I'm gonna do a perspective that's gonna make us all sick. Let's see this. Just look at the coaster stats if you wanna see them. I'm gonna. Oh boy. Hey, this one's going up. We're gonna do this guest facing thing. Zoomed out. It's gonna be like a pinball machine. Or a Plunko machine? Is that what they're called? Plinko. Here we go. This is this is gonna be nuts. Oh no. <laughs> My world is upside down. What is happening to me? What have I done? Oh, oh no, this is not gonna be good. Ah! Okay, I love this perspective now. If you use it right, on the right coaster, it's freaking amazing. Let's go. Let's freaking go. <laughs> okay, let's ride it normally. We'll do a uh, seat view here. Off we go. Oh my god. Hey, what happened to the music here? I want a refund. That is great. I like this concept uh, of using this style of coaster. I almost wish it was like on the side of a mountain built like shanty huts all around it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's going through a building and then it's going underneath the building and then like through the balcony and down through the windows. Uh, if anyone, yeah, like play around with that idea. Anyone that's inspired by pirate, take a stab at that. I think I think there's a lot of and creativity to still be had at this. Look at that, you uh, put some towers and stuff onto your uh, ship ride there. Very, very nice. All sorts of crazy stuff going on over here. Oh, here we go. Neptune versus Poseidon. This might be one of my favorite coasters in the park, because I love a good Woody. That's what she said. <laughs> but, um, uh, but I also love a good RMC. This is the best of both worlds. Dueling, racing, battling it out. Neptune versus Poseidon. Great little viewing balcony there. Let's go. All right, well, what are we looking at here? Neptune is the Woody. There's a look at the coaster stats, about a kilometer in length. They're gonna probably be similar other than the inversions. Uh, oh, this one's taken off. Let's just ride this. There we go. That is freaking gnarly. I don't think I did, uh, I don't think I did it justice by riding the front seat. I think we gotta go with the back here. And maybe what we could do is go to night. I think they said that this is fully lit for night, which is actually pretty impressive to do. Not often do you see um, a Woody lit for nighttime here, but this uh, car has a, a headlight and I wanna see it pass over us. So that's what we're doing here. Let's check it out.
right, that was much better uh, in terms of watching and seeing the interactions between the coasters. Since we're at nighttime, we might as well jump over to the uh, Steel Hybrid here and uh, give this a ride at nighttime. And maybe what we'll do is uh, the same thing here. Ride the back of the train at night. We'll go POV day again. Actually, no, we'll do the reverse because then we get completely different experience overall. There we go. We'll do nighttime front seat, daytime back seat. Off we go. Good googly moogly, what a gem. Wow, a lot of content to see there with this here coaster, riding it four different ways. What a treat, absolute treat. Wow, that is a ton of fun. The uh, nighttime lighting too, not easy to accomplish on a wooden coaster, yet alone a dueling wooden hybrid coaster. That was uh, quite something special. Love the interactions between the two coasters, one doing inversions over the other. Again, taking that innovation to the next level. These are the types of theme parks that really get me giddy, that get me up in the morning. These are the, the ones that really get me excited and Potatoes 55 is doing it right here today. Now this is the a one and only water ride as they explained in their introduction here uh, that's in the park and it's a water ride dark ride so i think we're gonna be going on this one at nighttime only which is uh definitely interesting for a water ride the pirate's quest all right i think we got to do the uh the look forward here let's do this oh all right we got to restart they have a sequencer it was trying to change it from night to night it looks like they want us to go at daytime and they'll turn the lights out for us for the dark ride portions of the ride okay um, I'm a fan let's do that
That is really quite a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really impressed by the control of the, the timing of the day-night sequencer. It's almost like as the doors were opening and the, and the light just was starting to kind of emerge in, that's when the light kicked in and it felt like such a natural transition between dark to light. I thought the timing of that was perfect. A uh, really cool way to do uh, an indoor kind of parts of the Caribbean boat ride going in and out, but mixing that in with a fun splashdown. Look at that. It's like nothing I've seen before. Very creative and different. I love it. This park is really something special, you guys. Really, really cool. All right. Now we have uh, a bit of a Western area. Let's just go down here and see where it takes us. We got the Maverick on the left here. Fun shopping on the right. Let's go. So what kind of uh, secrets are in store for us here? We're going to start things off with the scorpion. Got some uh, heavy metal music or something on there. <laughs> hey, I really like this uh, rock wall facade that you put in. It's uh, really well done. It's not repetitive. It looks nice. Not often do those red rocks uh, get layered so nicely like that. I'm a fan. Okay, the Scorpion, 1.6 kilometers, 85 miles per hour, nine airtime counts with 8.2 seconds of airtime. Get ready to ride the airtime. Track view for this. I, I, I have a feeling this is gonna be a super smooth experience and I think the best way to experience that would be track. Let's go. All right, taking us through the countryside, the backside of the Western area. Again, th throwing me for a, a bit of a, a loop there, the misdirect. I think I'm getting on a Western coast. We're gonna go explore the desert, uh, the uh, rocky terrain, and it takes us through the, the backside country lands, which I'm not mad at it, but at the same time, I feel like you should have done a little bit of both. Have that transition, you know, it gets, as we get further out, it, it transitions from rocky to grassy to dead or whatever, and then, then it starts to get a little bit um, into the nature-esque side of things. I love what you did here so much that I want to see more of it, and I guess that's the only reason I'm making that comment there. I am curious to know if you did any nighttime lighting on this sucker. No, none at all. Okay, that's, that's fine with me. Riding it once here today, quite good though. I have a feeling that'll probably be the second longest coaster in the park um, compared to that 2300 meter one. But we'll see. This one looks to have some length on it as well. Oh, that one's exciting. Okay, I thought it was um, an inverted RMC, which is kind of insane. But then the description said wooden. Is this the one? No. Okay, but there is one behind it. So we have the lightning stampede, almost a kilometer in track length, 55 miles per hour, 10 inversions. Oh my goodness. All right, definitely do track view for this one as well. Let's go.
<laughs> oh my god, I love it. I might have jumped the gun a little bit. I think I fast forwarded a bit there. So the song. Okay, we do have nighttime lighting. So let's ride it again at night. And I won't fast forward it. Because uh, the Planet Bluegrass song takes a while to kick in. And the the kind of when, when it does kick into high gear, it's like super zany and crazy, right? And I guess I was like... Yeah, I, I guess uh, the fast forwarding of it made the song kick in too late. So it was uh, a little bit slow when it should have been going crazy. But I think the song when it goes fast actually matches with the zaniness of all the inversions and all the craziness happening. It was quite a vibe. So let's see again at nighttime. I won't fast forward it here. Let the song do its thing, kick in naturally. Let's go. There it is. I freaking love it. Although it wasn't perfect uh, in terms of like lining up the music. I am a big fan of getting songs to work well with coasters. I think the one thing you could have probably done is just had the drive tires here and set them to, you know, like two, two, three miles an hour. So it like comes out slowly as the music starting to ramp or just have a block section here. Instead of going straight into the launch, it waits here for a second. Right, and then it launches. Uh, the other way you could have done it is it has enough speed here to hang. So if you just bring this inversion up just to about here, it'll like hang there and then it'll drop down. And there was a point where the music started to kick in right about here. Whereas like if you did another stall, bringing this up just a little bit higher, as the music's just at a crawl, it drops and it kicks in, right? And that would have just been perfect. That way we get the crazy zany music of Planet Blue Brewgrass for the whole duration of the coaster, either right out of the rip by having to park here or right after the, the hang time there, right? But what a wildly fun coaster. Overall, I'm just trying to give some critiques that would line it up better to the song. And so very, very minor at that because I liked it so much. And I think it just could have been timed slightly better. But I love the idea. I love the concept and everything that went into that. Really fun. All right, what do we got going on over here? We have a sci-fi area. Oh my goodness gracious. The cube, got the planet coaster sci-fi. The collider, it's been completely reskinned. Oh, look at that. Let me fast forward it here. So it should collide and go right inside of the ring, right? That's what's gonna happen because this thing raises up and goes 90 degrees, right? If it'll ever go, there's our inverted wooden coaster there. Absolutely insane to say. Here we go. Da -da 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 -dun. Da -da -da -dun. Oh my god, it's gonna lock in the ring of power. Drop, 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 drop. I feel like we need special effects. That is gnarly. Oh! <laughs> I freaking love it. Yeah, you need like pulsing lights. Maybe it has some. Oh my goodness, that's nuts. Uh, yeah, maybe I should be going at night here. Actually, got this really cool, funky teal galactic flight. So this is the winged, uh, the wing coaster. What did they say about the galactic flight? The last coaster made for the park. It's a thrill wing coaster. So this was the last coaster that Potatus made, but not the last coaster we're going to be riding here today. Just look at the coaster stats. Nothing too crazy standing out to me. Let's uh, ride the wing as intended at night. Let's go.
wow, the glow that comes off the sci-fi area as we embark back into this. Oh my goodness, it's wild and crazy. I will say that I haven't really commented on this, but there's a little bit of a rattliness or a shakiness to the coaster track on a lot of these coasters for some reason that I don't normally see. And what I'm going to guess is happening here. Either this creator tried to use that four meter smoothing method and it didn't work properly, or I'm just too used to seeing that method. But like, yeah, there's something just a little bit jittery or shaky. Oh, this is the observatory. I guess we can take a look at that. Something just a little bit shaky with the camera on some of these tracks. And I don't know what's causing that. So uh, something for the creator to take a look at. If you are using the four meter smoothing method, I would say stop <laughs> because it's not working correctly for you. Uh, cause I've seen people just build standard coasters with the, you know, the, the way the game is intended to be building them and we don't get that rattliness. And I've seen, um, really smooth coasters with the four meter smoothing trick, but I've also seen rattly coasters with it. So whatever's going on there, uh, potatoes 55, just take a second evaluation next time you're building coasters at whatever you were doing before and, uh, try, try to switch it up. Where are we going? What is this? Oh, this is for this ride here. But that's not to take away from what you have done well. I just think everything's been so fun that if we could uh, smooth out those little bits of ricketiness, uh, the coaster would be pretty flawless overall in terms of like creativity and design. Wow, the Cosmic Cow Flight Machine. I love me some Cosmic Cow, you guys. Oh my God, this is amazing. The pink and cyan, the traditional Cosmic Cow colors. Okay, yeah, this is wild. Again, the coaster choice here, why did you go with Cosmic Cow for a gigantic inverted wooden coaster? It doesn't really fit, but at the same time, I'm not mad at it. It's like you're choosing to go out of the ordinary, do something extraordinary. But uh, this is something we've never seen before. Like what the heck? It's an actual inverted wooden coaster. That's going to be a wild POV because we're going in between all of those boards. <laughs> flying by us. And if you're wondering how they did that, I don't even know. <laughs> They flipped a wooden coaster upside down so that the supports would... That's why I thought it was an RMC. And then they built a, a another coaster underneath it, I think. Yeah, it's two coasters and followed it along. That's wild. That is wild, my friend. Okay, this one's getting to the top of the lift. We'll do nighttime as well. Let's just check this out. The tunnel of I freaking love it. Oh my God. What did I just witness there? That whoosh, 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 whoosh. That is mesmerizing. Never have I ever seen anything so cool. Ah, oh, I really hope it's lit all the way through because I want to ride it again. And I'd love to see those pink and blue cosmic cow lights surging through there. Let's do track view and off we go. An inverted wooden coaster, the first ever 
in 600 and something episodes on this channel. That is mine freaking blowing. Potatoes 55 doing it different here today and I freaking love it. I'm a little disappointed by the nighttime lighting. As I mentioned, I was like, why would you choose the inverted wooden for the cosmic cow? Uh, if it would have done something really extravagant, because you have all these boards, right? And at nighttime, when the when the lights, the floodlights hit those boards, each one of them is going to be colored. And so if you would have hit them from pink on one side and blue from the other, you would have had these like pink and blue boards all the way through. It would have looked just magical and it would have fit that sci-fi theme a lot better. Uh, however, the only thing that's really cosmic about this is the boarding station, which I love, but I think maybe it would have been better suited for a different coaster here. And and then this may have been better for like a Miss Ellie's Wild Rodeo or something. I don't, I don't really know, but something was a little bit off there. But overall, I mean, what a masterful creation here. What a master work of a, a theme park here. Um, we're not done because I did not go on this back end mine train coaster. Yeah. Well, I want to finish my thought before we go on this because, yeah, I'll have to check the ride list to make sure we went on everything, though. But the innovation on this park is just superior. F f like, I've like nothing I've ever seen before. You're doing something different with all of these rides, thematically doing something unique. You put a touch, a spin, or a little tweak to every single ride that would normally be a traditional ride, you took a spin on it. And I, I really love that. There's something really special about all of these rides overall. This here is like, what? Uh, that's gonna be my favorite ride of the whole park, just because of the innovation and the sheer insanity of it. The creativity of just coming up with that idea, flipping the wooden coaster and then having another coaster go through it is freaking genius. And it makes me wonder what else have we missed over the years? What two coasters can you combine and what can they, uh, what can they do? So potatoes, you've done something marvelous with this park. It's kind of small. It's kind of quaint. I mean, it's not small, but you know, with the parking lot, everything combined, it technically does go end to end, but you know, it's kind of empty out here. It's a big parking lot. It's a little bit empty. You've utilized the back ends of your park with the explorative aspects of the coasters, leaving us with this much theme park. And if we just look at this here, this half donut here, if you will, that is the park size. It's small compared to those end to end mega parks. However, you crammed 17 coasters and 22 flat rides into this, did something unique and innovative, which each and every one of the coasters from coaster supports to coaster elements, to combining coasters, to making them duel together. And then you've done something over the top and fun with the theming. And even some of these flat rides have really cool and unique skins to them. Uh, it's really fun. It's a very, it gives me like RCT vibes, but then like Planko-fied. This is what Planet Coaster can do. It can do things that uh, RCT can't. And you've taken the elements of what can't be done in RCT and applied it to what uh, a theme park that somebody would build in an RCT setting, if that makes sense. This feels like a leafy lake or something like that and you know where you're supposed to build around a lake and then you put all the rides in and stuff but then you just kind of like put some magic dust on all of it right you just like sprinkled a little bit of potatoes magic in there and i love it this was a lot of fun i really really adored this park here today but we're not done there ladies and gentlemen we definitely have a mine train coaster to go on why do i feel like i've been on it now that i'm here have we been on it mountain explorer maybe not maybe i just remember it from the b-roll that's probably what it is oh it's another planet bluegrass okay if this is in fact the final ride of the park which i think it might be we're gonna finish it with some planet bluegrass good vibes nothing better than the good vibes and feels of a planet bluegrass ladies and gentlemen potatoes 55 with lakeside adventure one of my favorite parks that i've been to in a, in a hot minute this was quite something quite special but we might not be done yet we're going up the lift for this coaster i'll hit the ride list and uh give you guys a farewell if this is in fact the last coaster. Let's go.
freaking Wii. That is quite the mine train adventure ride if I've ever seen one. Definitely some length on that. What was the overall length? 1.7 kilometers up and down, up and around. Very wavy, very fun, explorative. That was uh, quite nice. Very nice. I love all the little custom bridges and stuff that you got going on in there. Let's take a look at the old park at nighttime as well, because some of these coasters were well lit at night and some of them weren't. You did mention that you wanted some to be a little bit extra spectacular at night, uh, those in particular, but generally speaking, most of them were. Uh, I did give a little bit of feedback, like with this one here, uh, you have the whole King Ghoster theme. I would love to see that run out into the backlands a little bit more, like going through some graveyards and some uh, just hit those fog emitters and extra spooky stuff on the outside so that we constantly stay within the theme i would have loved to see like a little bit more of that purpley lighting having that uh, experience same could be said with what i mentioned with the cosmic cow one even some of this stuff back here so you've done a really good job <laughs> with everything that's within the boundaries of the park being super thematic well lit and over the top and i guess for next time maybe um extend some of that out a little bit more add a little bit more of that uh, theming on the explorative parts of your coasters i know the coasters are moving fast and it's moving through the hill tops and stuff like that but i think just a, a little bit more could take it really over the top because the experiences were so phenomenal so that's pretty much all i have for feedback there for you here today potatoes let me hit the ride list up and make sure we've been on all of them Oh my god, I found one. <laughs> the Cyber Dragon. No freaking way, it's a junior. We had a junior caterpillar earlier in the episode, and there's also a junior dragon. I have no idea where the queue is for this thing. Oh my goodness gracious. What, what, this is why I missed it. It's buried within all of this craziness. I don't even know how... Is this it? Oh, it's maybe it's somewhere in these pathways. It's so confusing and, and claustrophobic in here that I don't even know. Oh my God, there's an exit. What's this? Yeah, I have no idea. Oh my God, it's right up front. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I went around and in, and then uh, I didn't come by. I actually didn't walk by the front of the lake here. So I completely missed this entire section. It is the Cyber Dragon. We're gonna uh, ride this little guy at night. Look forward at the back. Let's go. Let's go. Fun thematic sci-fi cyber dragon. That's adorable. I don't think I've ever seen someone do sci-fi uh, dragon junior. That's really cool. Again, just a uh, fun, creative, individual potatoes, 55. Everything about this park was a complete joy especially love the innovation like i said at the top of the video it has it all so that's all my thoughts my favorite coaster is the inverted wooden what was yours and why fire away down in the comments below and that is going to do it for us in today's episode of park spotlight thank you all so much for watching and i hope you have an absolutely wonderful day bye now